Hello there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and welcome to November's Fixathon. This is day one. What is a Fixathon? Well, it's going to be me trying to fix things every single day for seven whole days. So, hopefully, there's going to be a video every day for the next seven days. Most of the items will be customer returns, and then at the end, we'll see out of the seven days what have we actually fixed? Was it even worthwhile fixing? What was my favorite fixes? What were a nightmare? Should be a little bit of fun. So, without any further waffle, let's get straight into it on the first item, which is a Bosch electric screwdriver. It shows no sign of life whatsoever. I've tried plugging it in via a micro USB at the bottom there, and it still has no signs of life. It looks immaculate. It doesn't look like it's ever been used. Box is a little bit tatty. It's a current model, IXO7 or XO7. So let's bring it over to the mat and see if we can work out why it's not working. Now check this out. If I plug it in here, it's not drawing anything. So if you look there, zero amps. And there's no indication of any charging light whatsoever. So let's undo the screws, take it apart and see what's happening on the inside. It looks like we've got various Torx bits around the edge. Right, it looks like they're Torx 9. Right, I think I have to take off this front bit. Here we go. Well, first things first, let's see if we have any charge in the battery. Bolts DC. No, nothing at all. Hmm, how bizarre. So I wonder, has the battery itself failed or has something on the board caused, caused that? Oh, we've got two micro switches here. This doesn't have different speeds. There's no speed controller, there's no slow and fast. So what's the two micro switches for? I'm thinking it's in case one goes faulty because the switch is always gonna be the weak spot. Then the user won't actually know that one's faulty because the other one will still be working. If that's the case, that there is a lovely little bit of design, but put it down in the comment section why you think there's two micro switches. I think it's so if one fails, then the user will have no idea, and that way Bosch retains its reputation. Well, let's plug it in, and let's see if the voltage changes, because that's gonna be way too low to actually uh, uh, indicate a charge, I think. I wonder has the CID gone on it? We went to 29. Wow. Hmm. It is actually uh it is actually charging. But why are you so low? Yeah, I think if I was to leave that, it takes three hours to charge. I bet if you would, if I was to leave that for about an hour, I bet maybe then it would indicate a charge because this should be a 3.7 volt battery, but about 4.2 ish when it's fully charged, and maybe it won't even indicate a charge charging here or the light. There must be a light that comes on when it's charging. Maybe it will only get to that when it gets to about maybe 3.3 volts. So most people you see would uh, plug that in, leave it for 10 minutes, and say no, it's not working. But look, it is actually doing something, and that's why it's useful if you have a multimeter. I mean, it's not even showing on here, but you can see it is getting a charge into it. The question is, is whether it's safe or not. And most people are gonna say no, because the battery is so discharged that it won't be safe to use. So it's a 2000 milliamp hours ICR18650. And I presume this is just gonna be a temperature probe on here. Yeah. Well, I want to see if I've got any batteries which would uh, which would do the job. I'm going to leave that plugged in now. Let's just see when we come back, has it gone to? Let's see if it gets to 100 there, so 0 0.01. Well, it's been about five minutes because I've been looking at some replacement batteries here. Only the ones that I've got in stock. Neither of them are 2,000 milliamp hours, but I've got one which is 2,500 and one which is 3,000. Let's just go across here now, see what it's growing by. Yeah, there you go. Isn't that amazing? We come back just as it got to 100. 
So now this is my uh, this is my question. We can clearly see it's charging, but it's not registering a charge because it's putting it in slowly, which is the safe thing to do. But I've been told many times that if a battery falls below a safe level, it's no longer safe to use. And this has fallen below that safe level. Now, let's just double check if we were to, uh, let's just unplug this a second. I just wanna make sure that there's nothing on the board that's giving me some kind of weird reading. Let's just go straight on to the battery. Just in case there's something pulling it down or something like that. No, so we can clearly see there that the battery is completely flat, yeah? So that battery is no longer safe to use. But I know that if we plug this in and leave it for three, four, five hours, I know that it will start charging off its own accord once, it's, uh, once it gets up to a certain amount. You know, maybe when they get, this gets to kind of like a one volt, maybe then it will start drawing like 0.02 or 0.04, and bit by bit it will put more power in there. So what my question is, is that if somebody had this, just a normal person who doesn't try to fix things, they're just gonna plug this in and go off to work for the day and come back and it's gonna be charged, and they're none the wiser that that battery was completely flat. So, is it safe or is it not safe? I, if this was mine, would just leave this charge up now and I would use this. But I know the comment section are gonna tell me off because they're gonna say that this battery is unsafe to use. So there we have it, a failed battery. Or is it something on the board that's caused it to fail? Is there something on the board that's not turning off properly and it's just got a constant little drain and over time it drains the battery down way below its safe cutoff point? Possibly. So once I get a new cell installed, I can do a little current test to see whether or not there's something draining down on the board. So ideally, you would like to replace like for like. The battery that's in here is a 10 power battery. It's an ICR18650 MH46259. I don't have any of them, but I do have other cells in my possession. I've got a Samsung cell, which I think will be okay. It's higher on the old storage, so it's got 2,500 milliamp hours rather than 2,000. But annoyingly, it's lower on the maximum discharge. So maximum discharge, I presume, is how much the screwdriver can actually use that battery. And maybe if you were screwing in a massive screw, you would need the highest discharge current possible. The one that's in there, the 10 power one, is actually 30 amps, which is crazy, 30,000 milliamps, while the one I'm putting in is only 20,000 milliamps. But I think it's gonna be okay. As far as like the minimum voltage and the discharge cutoff, that's all the same, nominal voltage, charging voltage is also very similar so I think it's going to be absolutely fine to use but clearly do not copy what you see in my videos you should be putting in what you've taken out because it's been designed for that cell and not a cell that my mate Vince has put in but because it's a cell on in its own right and I'm not pairing it with another cell I think it's going to be fine what's interesting is the 10 power one that's coming out is ICR which is lithium cobalt oxide while the one I'm putting in is INR which is also lithium cobalt oxide but it's also got nickel magnesium in there as well for thermal stability so the one i'm putting in should be a little bit safer but it won't pack the same punch as a icr cell i think it's going to be just fine though so what i need to do is i'm going to reuse the terminals that's on the 10 power cell i'm not worried about putting pliers near this cell because it is completely discharged i'm not going to pierce it or anything but at the same time i'm not going to be super super gentle with it these terminals are nice and thick actually it looks really well made so i'm peeling them off the positive and the negative and then i need to spot weld them on to my cell i'm also taking care with the little temperature probes because they need to go back on as well so i need to spot weld on these terminals that I've just taken off onto the new Samsung cell then hopefully this will be working again but we have to do a current test to see what it's doing let me just show you a little bit of the spot welding because that's always enjoyable okay I am at 5.7 volts I'm at 15 T let's see if that's going to be okay right I don't think this is going to go through slightly worried I'm going to stand up because it's right at eye level so I'm going to stand up I didn't even feel anything there. 
Did it go through at all? No, it just stuck to there. I think I'm going to have to go up to 20T. Right, I'm now at 20T. Let's see if that makes a difference. Here it goes. Oh, nearly, nearly. It stuck it a tiny, tiny little bit. Right, let's go up to 25. I don't think I've welded anything this thick before. Right, a bit more power there. But still, still not enough. The thing is that nearly blew through the metal. Let's go up to 30. I don't really want to go higher than 30. That felt quite nice. Okay, that may be on. Let's try this side. Hmm, maybe. I've got lots to play around with on here. You know what, I am gonna, nah, that's coming off. I'm gonna go up, I'm going up to 35. Let's see if that's gonna do. That feels good. That definitely feels good. I think 35 is the answer on this one here. It's nice, it's not even sparking. I think I've probably like, nailed it. Don't get me wrong, I love it when it does spark, but I think this is it. I'm gonna do one here and one here. I think we might be done. Right, that sparked. Maybe I wasn't pressing down hard enough there. Well, look, that is on. That is on. Happy with that. And I can't feel any heat at all. Right, so, whoa, easy Vince. I'm gonna have to line it up now. So we want, uh, I'm gonna put it here. I want it to line up exactly with that one. I'm gonna stick one of these on, just to give it a bit more, uh, more protection. All right, here goes. So I'm gonna hold that in place with one. Here it goes. It's done it. Probably not straight, but it's on. And here. That was a nice one. Right, and I think I'm gonna do one in the middle here and there, because I'm not sure if that one did very well. There we go. Definitely on. We are definitely on. It might not be as good as it was originally. I'm well out there with my <laughs> with my lining up. But if you squint your eyes, it's okay. Mix up the negative first. Hope it doesn't go bang. In. In, no bang, which is good. Let's put that there and we're gonna tape this back on. Put that in half, because I want these to be covered. There. Right, okay. Right, so I presume that's because it's in the wrong position there. Hold on. There, now is it gonna go? Yes, it is. And the other way? Excellent. I mean, it looks like it's had no use. There's no dust or anything anywhere, but I suppose it's not a drill, but still you'd expect expect something. Well, let's uh, pop it back together. And well, actually, no, we want to test it, don't we? We want to test it for, let's charge it to begin with, and then we want to test it for, see if it's leaking. Why did, uh, you know, why did it is, it, is it using current? Why did it drain in the first place? Or was the other cell just faulty? Let's see what's happening now. Can you see there, 0 0.89, 0 0.9. And we have a green light here charging. Let's see how quickly it's going up. Let's see if it's charging. Yeah. Does it work when it's charging? Nah, cuts out. 
Yeah, so it's got some sort of lock on it, hold on. That's clever. Right, well look, we can measure it now, can't we? So let's put this into current. I never ever do this. But let's put it into... Well, should we do it into milliamps ones? And that, that will show whether it's drawing anything when it's not in use. I think that's correct. So if we were to put that there, and then if we were to go across here and here, then that's going to show us, isn't it, whether or not it's drawing anything. Is it because I'm in the wrong one? Would I have to be in 10 amps to actually make it work? Why does that not give me a reading? Oh, I'm such an idiot, sorry. Right, let's go to there. You can tell I never use that one. Right, so it's 155 amps that's being used. It's getting weak because remember the battery is weak. Okay, now let's put it to milliamps. And milliamps here. Let's see now, are you drawing anything when nobody's pressing anything? No, you're not. So it looks like the battery is not just going to go flat on its own. Just in case, I can't see how it makes a difference, but just in case, I'm going to unplug the other side. No. And now let's put it to here. Go to amps. Let's just see, because we know it is definitely working on that one. It's not reading anything there either. So I'm not sure why that battery was so low. Maybe it was just a faulty battery for manufacture. And maybe when it arrived to the customer, it was already, uh, the voltage was already low. Maybe this has never been used. I'm just, I just want to see, hold on, if I take the leads off, is it going to uh, one? But that's so small, it was going to one anyway, even with the leads off. So that must be just a meter. Well, if I'm doing that correctly, there is a big if there, then, uh, I don't think that's drawing anything, meaning that I think we can say that the, it was the original battery that was at fault. Right, let's give this a good charge up and see if we can find something to screw. Boom, boom. So I put the trigger back in, I put the cover back on, drop the screws, and then I charge it up. I do notice after about 20 minutes or so that there is a fair bit of heat coming from it. So I get my thermal cam out, but it's okay. It's like 30 something degrees. It's just warm to the touch, but it feels like it's coming from the actual battery board rather than the battery itself. I presume that's completely normal. Anyway, the good news is, is the more it charges, the amps drop and drop and drop. And eventually it gets to the stage where the amps are showing zero, which is brilliant. So it means then that it's charged itself up and then it's also stopped charging when it's reached a level. And then just to make sure, I then unplug it and I plug it in again and it goes up to 0.2 of an amp. And then sure enough, five to 10 minutes later, it goes back to zero again. So it's definitely cutting the charge off. So it looks like this is fixed. So now I just need to find something that I can screw in to show you it working for the end of the video. Right, here we have a real world test. Been doing a bit of decorating here in the My Mate Vince house. When I say we, not me, my wife, but I have been laying floor, wallpaper, etc. but she's painted this here. So there was already a towel holder thing up here and I undone it so she could paint with the roller. So there's still raw plugs underneath here. They just don't look like wall, raw wall plugs because uh, they're covered in paint. But anyway, here is the screwdriver. It has a nice little light at the front and we can screw in and also undo as well. So there we go. Now let's see how it copes with this. Oh, I like the light. Right, well I have used the wrong bit really there, but it is okay. Uh, I should get a level by right. Hold on, how much? Let's have a look, I'll just do it by eye. There. Well, we're in. It did the job. 
So there we have it, a nice little lightweight screwdriver. Only good for smaller tasks, but it still has a place in the market and it seems to work pretty well. No speed control though, which for me is a bit of a major flaw, but clearly it's been built down to a certain price but it does look like quite nice quality on the inside. It looks like it has been designed and made pretty well. So yeah, this will definitely be getting used around the My Maintenance household. If you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up. If you would have just charged up the battery and left the old one in there, be honest, put it down in the comment section below. Would you do that or would you have swapped the battery out? I think the majority of people would have probably just charged the battery up and carried on as normal. But there we have it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you very, very shortly.